And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo, and as you can see, we have a Christmas show in store for you. That was the Nutcracker Suite, and um, I'm going to learn a lot about classical music, which I love, but I don't know really that much about. And fortunately, I have an expert here in the studio, an expert pianist who's the person who's been playing those notes that we just heard. Katja Graneva came coming to be uh, for your third visit, I think, now, right? right? Third visit on Let Them Talk. Welcome back. And usually you're here for Christmas and the, the, the holiday season, and we're really happy to have you here. And again, as usual, you'll be playing at Carnegie Hall yes. this Saturday, right? And here's the poster. Great. And you'll be playing at uh, a classical holiday at Carnegie Hall Stern Auditorium, Perlman Stage, this Saturday, December 27th at 8 p.m. And uh, we'll be sh pl playing some video clips of your work in a little bit and uh, uh, talking to you about the show. So uh, urge folks to check it out. I mean, it's really worth it. I mean, everybody I talk to says it's a, a really a cool show, and people love to go have a good time there at, uh, at Carnegie. And uh, so, Katya, welcome back. Thank you. And uh, tell us a little bit what you have in store for, for the fans this year. Well, it's the first time I'm actually doing a holiday concert. Mm -hmm. And I combined it with my favorite pieces of romantic repertoire. Like I'm playing Moonlight Sonata. I'm playing Sh like Schumann, Lee's Dedication, a couple of Chopin pieces, Nocturne and Fantasy Impromptu, Liszt, um, Debussy, Claire de Lune, and Island of Joy. But then I put some things for holidays, like uh, Tchaikovsky Nutcracker Suite. Mm -hmm. And um, then I have beautiful variations on Silent Night. Mm -hmm. I actually just produced a classical CD of holidays mm -hmm. music, which was never done, was done for classical piano before. So me and my friend, who is a producer and arranger, Byron Duckhall, he made arrangements of Silent Night, mm -hmm. and I'll be home for Christmas. So oh, really? <laughs> so it's like so really great. fun. Okay, so good. And then I recorded Ave Maria Gounod version, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I'm combining it with very good. Like holiday music plus my favorite romantics. Okay, great, wonderful. And uh, so tell us a, a little bit about yourself for folks who might not have been uh, the new viewers we've picked up in the last year, might not have heard you last year. Talk about yourself. Uh, you were born in Moscow, Russia. Right. And that's where you were trained, right? Right. And uh, how long have you been in the United States and what brought you to the United States to play? Well, I came many 20 years ago as a tourist for one month's vacation <laughs> <laughs> and I decided to stay. But yeah. I'm trained under Moscow Conservatory, a school, s very special school under Moscow Conservatory mm -hmm. with a great professor uh -huh. at that time, Pavel Messner. So then I took one month's vacation here and I decided to stay. Uh -huh. And I went to Manus College where I got a um, master's program. Okay. So I decided to stay here in New York and it became my home. Okay. So I'm a real New Yorker. <laughs> right, right. But you travel the world. But I travel the world, but I always come back to New York. Yes, yes. And tell us some of the places you've been. You were talking earlier, of you were in uh, Paraguay just recently. Just this last two months, I was in Paraguay in October and South Africa in November and Cape Town and Namibia. Mm -hmm. Or you were playing there and performing. Yeah, giving concerts. And uh, how was your reception in both those places? It was great, fantastic. Uh -huh. I do a lot of concerts for children like in Westchester area, so I promote classical music to children. So when I was mm -hmm. in Paraguay, they brought 300 kids to the concert. <laughs> okay. So all the downstairs was mm -hmm. was adults and then, you know, oh, the I see. Up, up in the, the yeah. upper areas of the children. It was the whole right? school, like 300 kids, which was great. They loved it. Oh, great, great. Yeah. And what did you play for them? The, I didn't play Holy the concert because it was October, but <laughs> I played a lot of mm -hmm. favorite things, Chopin, Schubert, at least, right. Debussy. Right. Right, great. And uh, so uh, uh, that's great. So you've been traveling so that the last few months. And uh, um, uh, tell us a little bit more about, about your history, about what it's like. How did, how, did, how did folks discover that you had a talent? How did you find out you had a talent? I mean, was there a piano in your home? Uh, did you start playing on a piano? And somebody said, She's a great, she'll be a great pianist. How do you find out if somebody has a talent? Actually, it was me, it com happened completely by accident. Uh -huh. <laughs> One day, my neighbors called my mom and they said, it's a beautiful day, and we're taking our kids to music school for an exam. Why don't we take Katya along for a walk through the park? Mm -hmm. And my mom says, sure, take her, no problems. And then I was accepted in the music school. I passed some kind of test. I was five and a half years old. All right. So then they came back and they said, 
you know, your daughter has accepted that the music school. Oh, they gave you the test while yeah. you were there. And my mom said, we don't even have a piano. But they said, no, no problem. She can play our piano. For six months, I went to my neighbor's apartment to practice. Oh, really? And I think I, it was, for me, very natural. I when loved it. When you're that it. young, how, what do they start you with? How do you, how do you start? Or do you just start? Just simple songs, you know. Simple songs, right. But I think I played in a concert that six years old already, already like right. they chose me to play as part of the school like right. showcase right. whatever and how did you uh, how did you take to reading music and things like that I, I actually liked it to me it was a lot of fun right to and learn I remember how to when read. I was little I used to have a toy mm -hmm. and I would pretend that I'm teaching this toy right. to read the music do you always have to read the music or do you have uh, if somebody took the book away from you could you play no I usually give concerts without the music without but the music to yeah. learn a piece you read the music for what? I'm sorry. To when you memorize a piece, when you're just learning, I see. you read the music, and then you have to memorize right, it. Right, right. Okay, because uh, you know, in, in the United States, in, in, in American tradition of music, we have many people who came from very poor backgrounds and often were just listening on the radio or television and just started plunking on a piano mm -hmm. and discovered that they could play. And we find out years later, if they have great careers and they've traveled the world, that they don't even know how to read music. Um, so that's a possibility, right? Yeah, that, it's that's possible. been done to do that, right? right? Yeah. But it's well, that's the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> that's doing it the hard way, right? Yeah. All right, great. So uh, I always wondered. To me, it looked all like looked a, lot, a lot of dots on the page. I was very. It didn't turn into something for me in the way it does for some people, right? It's a language. You have yes. to learn it. It's know? like a language, right? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so. Tell me about, uh, do you play anything else besides piano, or is that your... Is no, just piano. All your energy goes into yeah. the piano, right, into learning how the piano is. Um, so uh, maybe we'll start by actually watching one of the videos that, that gives some idea of what, what you do and how okay. you sound and what you look like when you're playing, and uh, then we'll come back and talk about it, okay. right, and, and reproduce. So let's go to the, sh let's go to the first cl clip on the video, and uh, we'll be back in a minute. <laughs>
Oh, great. Katja Graneva. Wow. Uh, well, thank you for that. Uh, Katja is going to be playing a classical holiday at Carnegie Hall this Saturday, December 27th at 8 p.m. And you can get more information at uh, carnegiehall.org. Um, org. Okay, Car www.carnegiehall.org. And uh, you can get all the ticketing and other information you need, seating information. And... Um, uh, it's a Christmas show, I guess, a classical holiday, right? Classical music, and uh, uh, that was wonderful. Tell us a little bit about what we just heard. Well, this was a Schubert impromptu. Okay. One of my most favorite pieces, yeah. Right. I played it at the Singapore mm -hmm. when I did a tour in Asia. Sure, right. We talked well, about that last yeah, year when you were here right. with us, right? And uh, so romantic, you used the word, th these are romantic songs, romantic pieces. Well, the pi yeah. I'm I mean, romantic. By romantic, I mean the music which has a lot of feeling and expression. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. you can yeah. tell. You, yeah. uh, you do give it a lot of feeling and yeah. expression. And uh, this will be something you'll be performing? Uh, well, not this particular not this piece, but in that genre. Right, I'm right. playing Schumann Lee's Dedication, which is a mm -hmm. very be beautiful piece. Right. It's actually the next one on the DVD. Okay, we'll listen to that before we're over, right, yes. in a few minutes. Uh, so, uh, great. So, okay, good. So, Stern Auditorium, Carnegie Hall, Classical Holiday with Katja Graneva. And uh, so, Katja, tell us a little bit about a little bit more about your background. And uh, uh, so, as a child, you're you're starting. You're playing your first concert at the age of six in Moscow. And uh, did you, at that point, did your family, did you decide that this is going to be your life calling? Mm, I don't think at six years old I knew it yet. I think I just liked it, and I used to practice a lot. Mm -hmm. But. When I was... Um, Is that it? Practice, 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 yeah. and then more but practice when you're yeah. done with the practicing. But when I was 15 years old, my teacher let me perform at Moscow Conservatory Hall mm -hmm. as part of the bigger concert of his students. And that's when I realized that that's what I want to be. I want to be a concert pianist. You like the lights, right? You like this room right now with all these yeah. lights on us? <laughs> you like the lights. Okay, yeah. good. Good, good, good. And... Um, and uh, and the accolades you get and and uh, the wonderful uh, love that you get from your from your because you know classical music gets short shrift you know it doesn't always get uh, the outlets that it should anymore and uh, but it does if I mean I think it's such a and that's what it makes me sad that music classical music is kind of like not so popular but yet when people go and hear it they absolutely love it right. So I have very f f loyal fans. They would always follow me around. People right. fly in right now from other states to come to my concert because it's at Carnegie right. Hall. Well, we're all looking it's for the new, you know, so since we have this new political explosion going on in America, we're looking for the cultural explosion that always goes along right. with it. And we're looking what's it going to be this time, and uh, maybe it'll be classical music will return to our roots, right? Well, classical music is fantastic for the brain, like for children. Uh -huh. And that's what I think people maybe sometimes don't realize, like, kids have better grades and study better if they yeah. play an instrument or if they spend half an hour a day right. playing an instrument or listening to classical music. Oh, wow. And I could complain forever about how we cut in our schools. The first thing that gets cut is music and art, right, of course, yeah. unfortunately. And yet in countries like in... Uh, in uh, Venezuela, they have um, amazing musical programs, and uh, every right. everybody plays something in that country. Yeah, I just Everything. met actually somebody who has a foundation here from Venezuela. All right, okay, there you go, educators yeah. in America, wake up. We yeah. need ma art and education, not testing, testing, testing all the time. All right, see, there you go. And, and Katya, you work a lot with children. Yeah. And uh, when, when they listen, often you must play, you play in poor neighborhoods, you play in the Bronx, places like that. Well, how do people react when they hear it? They love it. Everybody loves it. Yeah. In fact, to Carl, right now, I'm, I have, I'm very fortunate. I have this wonderful friend who works in Westchester, mm -hmm. uh, George yes. Albano. He brings classical music to children. Sure. So because of him and the Pope Foundation, who is like the people he works with, we're bringing uh, like hundreds kids from uh, orphanage homes to Carnegie Hall concert this year. Oh, great. So to make them really happy and to feel holiday right. spirit. So this is something for, folks, this is something to support. This isn't just your average thing. This is something yeah. very important to support and to come and to, to uh, really be part of this uh, wonderful experience, a classical holiday at Carnegie Hall this Saturday at 8 p.m. And you can go to carnegiehall.org to find out more about ticketing. So, um, Katja, what is the next piece we're about to hear? Um, if he will play the piece. We want to play first and then we'll talk about it afterwards? Yeah. All right, let's go to the next piece and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Because he played different pieces. Oh, I'm sorry. He's playing not what I told him to play. It's 
it's the next one. He's making mistakes. Here you go, lady. He's gonna put go the next one. Here, um, here. Yeah, we got it down. Good, thank you. Yeah, this is. That's so beautiful. Wonderful. Okay, Katja Graneva again. Uh, you can see her at Carnegie Hall this Saturday, December 27th at 8 p.m. Katja Graneva presenting a classical holiday at Carnegie Hall. And um, wow, thank you so much for allowing us to play this uh, your uh, your videos. And uh, you. tell us um, a little bit about what we just heard. We've got a couple minutes. This was Chopin Nocturne. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Chopin's music is incredibly beautiful and also because it's so beautiful it was used so much for popular songs. I think there mm -hmm. is a popular song which came out of this mm -hmm. particular piece. I don't remember the words but somebody wrote to me the words. Uh, so there's words yeah, to it. And, there and the words to it, yeah. So pop songs actually, some came of them have their roots in classical. A lot of pop songs came from Chopin's music oh, really? because the melody is so natural mm -hmm. and it's like a speech. Right, right. Yeah, I it's see. very poetic and very beautiful. Okay, very good. So, so we'll this learn. piece I'm actually going to play at Carnegie Hall. All right. That one and then Fantasy Impromptu, which is also amazingly beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, wonderful. Yeah. And uh, we have a, another minute or so. Do you uh, do you ever compose your own 
music to go to play? Uh, is that ever an opening uh, area for you or something you've ever thought about doing? You know, I, I didn't really like think about composing, but like now I we produced this new CD, Holiday CD, and yes. a lot of things are arrangements which were not uh -huh. composed before. Right. So I worked with my friend on it, but really it's him who composed it, and I'm the one who is playing. Yeah, I see. But right. I love when people compose for me, I see. and then you I to get to play. Them. Yeah. Yeah, you play and they yeah. compose, right? Yeah. Interesting. So you work in teams together. Yeah. Very good. And uh, so again. Uh, Katya Graneva is going to be giving, presenting Classical Holiday at Carnegie Hall this Saturday. And uh, this is our Christmas show, so this is a great uh, uh, appropriate uh, program for that. And uh, thank you very much for joining us again, uh, Katya. Anything you'd like to tell the audience before we go? Uh, well, I'm really happy that I got to do holiday concert this year because my idea was to do this concert and to upli uplift people's spirit before New Year. I want people to go happy into the New Year, and that's why I'm doing this concert. I've never done a, a then concert at the end of December. Thank you very much, so Katya. Thanks. Very good. That's it. We did thanks. it. I'm going fast.